to VidCon London 2020. I learnt lots of stuff. Here's me implementing it all. I'm getting straight to the point. Check out my description below, you'll find some keywords. Basically, 2020 is the year I want to soar to the highest heights on YouTube, or if all else fails, at least hit 1k subscribers. <laughs> so, what did I get up to at VidCon London, I hear you ask? Well, let me tell you. I was invited to VidCon London this year as a guest of YouTube. I went by myself, which was pretty scary, and I had a lot of anxiety around it. But I think I made the most of it. Beforehand, I went onto the website and planned out what I wanted to do. I could only go on one day, which was the Sunday. So I looked at Sunday's timetable and I kind of planned out what I wanted to do, what I wanted to see, um, and went from there. And I think the Growing On YouTube talk was probably the most informative for me. I took loads of notes. So here are a few of the tips that I learned at the Growing On YouTube chat. So, the three C's, consistency, channel strategy, and content and within that there's the metadata so that's titles of your videos the tags on your videos and the descriptions on your videos so when you create a playlist for your youtube videos make sure you add descriptions to those so that the algorithm can pick it up have consistent thumbnails um, that are eye-catching and informative but don't repeat what you're saying in the title of the video make sure that all your videos are within the same subject matter so that your video is picked up as a expert on the subject matter by the algorithm and try and set up some upload days and times so that you're consistent with the watch time make sure you're cutting to the chase within the first minute of the video because if you ramble on about other things like I probably do quite a lot people might click off your video and you want your watch time to go up and make sure that people are gripped and engaged with your content so if your video is about Chocolate, make sure you're talking about chocolate within the first minute of the video. So you can create call to actions within your videos, which basically means asking people to continue watching your video for something exciting that's happening at the end, or to go and follow your social media accounts, or to watch another one of your videos on the same subject matter. A little trick slash tip that we were given was to create a video group. You can basically create gr video groups when you're looking at your analytics of your videos. So that's like how many people viewed it, where they were from in the country or in the world. So you can create video groups for subjects, so for example I could create a video group for be my beauty videos, my travel vlogs, my fashion videos, and then I can compare them against each other and see which kind of videos do better on my channel, which will help me create content in the future. You can create groups for videos with certain length, so you can create a video group for your uh, videos that are 3 minutes or shorter, or 10 minutes or longer, or longer than 15 minutes, and then compare those against each other to see which do better in terms of watch time and things like that. And then once you've done that, you can look at the most popular video on your channel and then try and recreate things like that because that's obviously what's drawing people to your channel. Okay, so massive tip that was given to us was that in 2020, controversial, but tags do not work as well. So apparently tagging your video with loads of different tags doesn't really help as much as it may have done in the past. It's more about using keywords in your titles and descriptions and making sure that you're using your words really carefully. And when you do use keywords that are describing your channel or your video content really well, it means that your video is more likely to pop up in a suggested sidebar. You basically want any video that someone watches to have a suggested sidebar with your videos, so you should dominate your own suggested videos. If someone's watching your video and the next suggested video is not a video by you, then there's something wrong. You basically want um, people to be able to continue watching your channel after they've watched one of your videos. I hope that made sense. And a top tip to check if that's happening is to open up an incognito browser and go on your YouTube channel, watch one of your videos and see what the suggested videos are. And if your suggested videos are not your videos, then you need to go back to that video and maybe edit the title and edit the description to make sure that you're really drawing in as many people as you can and using the right keywords in those subjects and titles. Things. Yeah. <laughs> So for example, a great thing to do in the description of your video is to have one of the keywords in your title re reappear, but in a natural way, not in a forced way. So don't just copy and paste your entire video title into your description. Make sure that it flows and that it makes sense, and that should help. So those are a few of the top tips I learnt in the Growing On YouTube chat at VidCon London 2020. I hope you found some of those tips helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you need anything clarifying or explaining, I'll do my best. I'm not an expert, but that was just me passing on my knowledge, so to speak, because I want everyone to be doing well. If you found this really useful, please give it a thumbs up. 
and subscribe for more videos. I don't always make videos about YouTube or growing on YouTube, but I do make videos about fashion and travel and lifestyle and I vlog. Um, so yeah, it'd be great to have you come back to this channel and enjoy more videos in the future. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.